So, in a sense, in a sense, in a sense, Duncan, uh, we are left with those two. Uh, uh, two. None other, nary another, not one other more. Uh, we have on the one side of the gulf, the chasm, the dividing line, if you please, we have the beauty of ideas, and on the, on the other, I don't know, the other term of the equation, if that's nicer, we have the idea of beauty. Uh, am I sensing through? Am I connecting? <laughs> uh, we're busy discussing the idea of beauty and the beauty of ideas. <laughs> hold a thought, Geoffrey, would you? I'm going to give you a thought. I'd like you to hold it for me. Would you do that for me, please? <laughs> I'm going to hold a thought now. <laughs> if beauty is only an idea, a form, a pattern, a template, a paradigm, an ideal, an idea, if you like, with an L, then what is the beautiful. Beauty is unattainable, but the beautiful surrounds us. Uh, we return to language, Philip. We make a return to language. That's the idea I'd like you to hold for me, uh, if you'd be ever so splendid. Right, well, <laughs> we've made a return to language. Listen to me. Uh, listen to me, Lovelet. Language <laughs> circumscribes beauty, uh, confirms, confines, limbs and delineates. It colours and contains. Yet language is only a tool, a tool that we use to dig up the beauty that surrounds us and is, we take, our only and absolute real. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. <laughs> um, uh, uh, hush, tish, vibble. Uh, I'm streaking ahead. Uh, let me explain, expound, expand and exposit. Would you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find you beautiful, but you are not beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Therefore, you contain a property of beauty. Therefore, the substance of which you exhibit a property must exist. Where is it? That is language's task. Uh, 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 who was it who said, uh, my language is the universal whore that I must make into a virgin? Who was it? Kate Aidy? <laughs> I think, I think it was Karl Kraus, but it needn't have been, it needn't have been. Now, Tommy, Tommy, it's time to ask you to give back to me the thought that I bade you hold. Um, I was holding the thought that we'd made a return to language. Correctly, Correctington. Language <laughs> pursues beauty, harries it, hounds it, courses it across the rough lands of inquiry, and in so doing can itself be beautiful. Ripple on ripple, image on image, wheel within a wheel like the circles that we find in the windmills of our mind. <laughs> Noel Harrison. Noel, as you so rightly Harrison. Now, language can be beautiful, and Madeline asleep in lap of legends old, plenitude, dishes, martyr, breasts, tumble, emolument, forage, smitten, plenum, vulva. Words that have their own sonority and beauty, which is extrinsic, extrinsic to their connotational or denotational referendums. I think he said vulva. <laughs> so, <laughs> Timothy. I'll leave you with a thought, a breath, a fruit, the drops from the boughs of my imaginings. Think beauty, but be beautiful. Say beauty, but say it beautifully. Beauty is duty and duty beauty, so there. Good night. I don't feel quite so well now. <laughs>